Um, and the question says that I've heard an imam mention that the shaitan is not present in the month of, the, of Ramadan. If this is true, why is it hard for a Muslim to stay away from sins um, during the month of Ramadan, even if the Muslim is performing his or her regular duties? Yeah, there's much more. There's a large discussion about this. Ibn Hajar Asqalani has a large discussion about this, whether the shayateen are all uh, chained up or not. They're not all chained up. They're not all chained up, and it's a it's a larger discussion. There's a number of hadith where you know the, there's a, a, where it's justified, and it, it's not justified. It's uh, substantiated that uh, that they they're not all locked up, um, and uh, it could be a, a, a group of shayateen that are locked up, or it could be a, a, a because you have uh, different classifications of uh, shayateen. Uh, that being said, the Easy answer is that uh, whatever evil does come, that it's an indication that it's coming from your raggedy old nafs, right? That it's just coming from you. And uh, this is something that you will have to work much harder on uh, to rid yourself of it because the human being has four enemies in the world. Um, Lucifer, the uh, world, uh, the desires, and this raggedy old nafs, right, Maha? The raggedy old nafs. So these are the four enemies. The weakest of them is shaitan. He'll, he'll run for the hills when Allah's name is mentioned. All you have to say is, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. What? Where'd he go? He's gone. He's not even waiting for you to finish the sentence because he knows what's coming. He cannot stand the mention of the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, as for the nafs, that is the worst of the four enemies. That's the hardest enemy to vanquish. And one of the things that I want to say about that is that with fasting, right? the verse that we just covered is a verse that, um, that infers warfare. Right? It begins with security and ends with protection. It is the shield. It's the fortress of fastness. Right? So you're talking about, you're talking about battle. Right? You're talking about going into war. And one of the strategies for going into war is that you cut off food and water supplies until your enemy surrenders. You cut off food and water supplies until your enemy surrenders. And what is that enemy who you are calling to surrender? It's that raggedy old nafs of yours. That's your enemy, right? And so uh, constrict food and water supplies by fasting and not by making up for your missed breakfast and lunch and dinner at the time of iftar. We should not be having seconds at the time of iftar. We should not be having Eid banquet dinners every night of the, the, the Ramadan because so-and-so invited me and so-and-so invited me, and you've literally got the whole thing catered, right? The whole thing is catered. Um, that hadith where uh, the person who breaks the fast of his brother will have his reward and, and, and his reward as well. Um, that's literally about the moment of breaking the fast of your brother. When you take the date and you put it into his mouth, that's it. Everything after that, you know, is, it's supposed to be on lockdown. You're supposed to be constricting the pathways of shaitan this month. You're supposed to be constricting food and water supplies until the enemy surrenders. Um, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to vanquish and slay the ego this month so that there's no trace of it and we can be like the wind fast.